welcome back to the Canvas Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. As promised last time when I uh, did my last video, I said that I would de uh, dedicate the next one to uh, some growing techniques and uh, practices, and that's uh, what I've decided to do tonight's program on. And I thank you for joining me. Uh, you know, everybody that's ever grown plants of any kind, uh, you know that there are, there are some basic ingredients you need. And of course, you need soil. Uh, you need sunlight, and, and of course you need the plants to uh, produce uh, plants. And, and, what, and no matter what type of plants you're growing, I've been an herb farmer for about 25 years now, and I've uh, grown organically that entire time and all. And I have found through uh, this period of growing that I've done uh, that the, one of the most important things that I can do for my plants, of, uh, no matter what they are and what I'm growing, is to start out with a really good organic soil. And I don't really like using any of these uh, peat or peat uh, moss type soils that they sell at uh, the garden centers and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of these really just, uh, they rob the soil of moisture and stuff uh, when the plants are growing. It makes it tough to keep them watered and stuff. So I I kind of stay away from those, but what I do like, uh, it, well, where I live here, I have an abundance of uh, trees and stuff, and there's always limbs and stuff falling down, so I'm able to generate a you know a tremendous amount of uh, mulch from leaf litter and, and whatnot, and this really is a good base to begin with for building you a good organic uh, mix to grow anything in. And of course, you have to certain varieties of plants that you grow, you have to adjust it a little bit, but Overall, this will pretty much suit because uh, when, you're, when you're collecting uh, debris and stuff from, and particularly these, uh, if, you, if you live around an area where the, these crews go around trimming the trees and stuff and they grind it up into the mulch that they do and all, you get a variety of different trees because they're trimming along power lines and stuff and it's not all just the same type of trees. You get a tremendous variety of the uh, type of debris and litter that they're cutting and the same is true when you're gathering it up in the woods and all, unless you're in a pine forest or something like that. But uh, for the most part, you get a pretty good, uh, here in East Texas anyway, you get a pretty good variety of, of a lot of different types of deciduous trees and, and some evergreen also. And what this does also, each of those trees all harbor different types of insects and critters and creatures and stuff. So you, you get a pretty good uh, general all around complement of the organic cycle that's out there that's uh, deceased and, and gone into the you know the soil building process and this is really the basis of having a really good organic soil now you're gonna you know you can grow strictly in stuff like this if you let it rot long enough of course it, it would take probably two or three years for that type of stuff to, to break down enough to where you could just uh, plant it solely but it is an excellent one to mix with and it can become up to you know, 50, 60 percent of the mixture that you're mixing together. Uh, another thing I like to use is, uh, uh, you know, dried out manures from different types of uh, barn animals, like particularly chickens and sheep, rabbits. If you got uh, somebody you know that's raising rabbits and all, but you want to make sure that the uh, that you let the, the 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 stuff you know dry out for about at least six months before you add it to this leaf litter mix. So you. In order to build an organic soil and all, it, it, it's a building process over the year and, and it's not one that you stop. I mean, you continue it on and on and on because, you know, you're going to need some as the next season rolls around and so you, it's, it's a building thing. And once you get it going and, and you have mulch piles that are generating this type of litter and, and uh, mulch debris for you, you, you can continue the growing for, you know, many, many time, years. I've done it for 25 years like this. and and I've had real good luck at growing all types of plants. And that, that's, uh, and uh, the, one of the big things I think that cannabis should be legal and people should be allowed to grow their own and all is so we can take available advantage of the sunlight that's out there, you know, during the growing season. Uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, in different states and stuff where it's still illegal, not like Colorado and Washington, you know, they have to grow in, in kind of discrete locations with lights that, you know, high, you know, either high pressure sodium or metal halide lights that are probably anywhere from five, four to five hundred up to a thousand watts each, and you know this uses a lot of power, 
and uh, not to mention the fact that there is a little bit of a, a danger and hazard there as opposed to what you'd have if you had the plants growing outside in the soil out in the full sunlight and this is a big fallacy of this whole thing about cannabis being illegal the fact that somebody can't you know grow their own and produce their own cannabis is it, it, you might as well tell them they can't have a garden and produce their own fresh vegetables that they're tied down to you know buying the poison stuff that they're trying to sell at the stores and all with the with an organic label on it and it just doesn't fly so you know when you're when you first start out and you're growing no matter what plant you're growing using the organic soils it saves you so much time and effort you don't have to and also too when we go organic you know you don't spray pesticides you don't put seven dust out. You, you look for the problem insects that you have and you do specific measures to take care of them. A lot of the things that plague the plants that when they're growing, like spider mites or aphids and things like that, these are, these are things that are, by the time you see them and all, you, you, it's far too late to, uh, to say you've been very fastidious in growing your plants. You've got to, th these things appear right at the beginning on the lower leaves of the plant. And if you nip it in the bud right then, in other words, you got to take care of the problem, you know, before it becomes an infestation. Uh, I've seen, you know, plants that were just, I had the tops of them so covered in aphids that I can't believe that the people had even looked at those plants in weeks because it, there were just so many of them. But, you know, there, there are measures you can do, even with the aphids, they're really a simple fix. You can wash those off of there with kind of a high pressure hose without damaging your plants. Uh, that's really a simple one. But the best thing is, is look for ant activity around your plants and stuff. If you see some, it's a good chance they may be farming the aphids up on the top of your plants and in the nodes of the leaves and stuff. So you, you really have to just be fastidious and, and check your crops out. The uh, spider mites, of course, are much smaller. And if you've if it's gotten to the stage where you're seeing the webbing and stuff, and this is the first time you've noticed them and all, well, you're either blind or you, you just, like I said, you haven't visited your plants in a while. And they, they start out, the webbing is a, is a condition that occurs long after the population of them has really exploded and all. But when you first see signs of spider mites, or maybe just like one or two little dots on the tops of the green leaves, and that's an indicator, they're kind of an off whitish looking color, like, the, like it's just a little mottled or something. That's an indication right there that something's going on on the underside of the leaf, and that's the time to investigate it. And a lot of the times you can either pull those lower leaves off and just discard them, you know, into a, a, a pile that you're not going to be using later, or just, uh, you know, take your fingers and, and literally clean, the, clean them off. And, uh, this can be done. I mean, it's uh, it seems like a an arduous task and all, but once you get the process going and you make the rounds and all, you know, it's not like you just spend hours and hours of you know doctoring and looking after the leaves and all that. The main thing is is to hit the problem when you first see it and don't let it become some giant infestation. Most of the pictures I've seen of people, their crops and stuff, no matter what they were growing, uh, by the time that infestation got to when they were photographing it. It, it was they were months behind on on nipping that in the bud and you're you know you can make up effective sprays that work real good that that if you got chewing insects like grasshoppers or or these little leaf hoppers and stuff like that you can mix up a uh, hot pepper spray that uh, is very effective on those i i grow the uh, boot jalaki pepper uh, just for that reason to make a, a pepper spray that i use on a lot of the plants that i grow and this acts as a deterrent for those chewers, you know, the ones that really like to put gaping holes in the leaves and all. And the, you know, the leaves are the energy of the plant during the during the vegetative growth stage of the plants. And and so, if you've got a grasshopper or something there that's you know munching away on them, it's actually taking away the energy from the plant. And this these are very important, even though they play a minor role later uh, once the flowering process begins on the plant. But uh, so you, when you're growing organic and all, I, that's, that's why I always say if you, that this is so stupid that people can't grow their own cannabis and, and plant it out in the full sun. The full sun itself actually prevents a lot of these uh, conditions that, that people in grow rooms encounter because of the conditions that they're having to grow in, the cool rooms, the, the way they're having to vent them, the, the artificial light itself and all. It just, uh, it, it, it's just insane 
that, that, these, that there's such a law in place that you, that you can't grow a plant. I mean, and for your own personal use. I, I still cannot, in my wildest of imaginations, understand how the American people sat back and allowed this to happen, but, but it did. And so now we're, thank God we have two states that, you know, voted to, to change that. And now we have 48 more to go because we're all Americans here. And this, it's just, it's just in, insanely crazy that this is allowed to continue. And that law enforcement still preys on these people and ruins their lives and charges them with felony, uh, you know, uh, crimes and whatnot. It's just, it's insane for all for growing a plant. But when you're, after you've, uh, got your organic soil ready together. And I, I like to use, like I said, I take the uh, rotted down bark. I like to make some of the uh, compost. Some, it depend, if the compost is dried enough and all, I sometimes like to mix them 50-50 and then throw in a, you know, a little bit of clay or sand and uh, into the mix just to help water retention all. But a lot of these uh, wood chips and stuff that as they're rotting down, you get quite a few big chips that get evenly distributed within the soil mix and these are nice for aerating the soil and holding it open to allow water flow and stuff to come in of course they you know they have if they're right on the side and, and you're growing in a container it's going to leak the water out pretty fast but overall they're they're more benefit than they are uh, you know a detriment and also as they rot down they too help feed the soil and and continue the organic process of decay that the plants are thriving off of now i I personally uh, think that if you use enough of the uh, the dried manures and all, and don't, and I'm not talking about manure that's you know five, six years old that stuff's been growing in and all that. Try to get some within probably six months of the time it was deposited there, and uh, that way it's still real rich in the nitrogen. But usually when you use this mixture, you don't have to have any additional uh, uh, fertilizer, so to speak. Now I don't I don't like to use any type of granular stuff. Uh, if I ever do uh, fertilize my plants, I, I mainly use a uh, liquid kelp. It's a, uh, it's a concentrated kelp, and it, you use a very small amount of it in a 50-gallon drum for the mix, and, and this would just be sort of a, a boost every now and then. I might do that to the plants to, to boost the herbs or something like that, that uh, you know, just to give them a little nitrogen boost. But usually, this mixture that when you, if you're growing in containers and, and in the ground too, if you've, if you've got this in your soil, it pretty much feeds the plants through its entire cycle and, and completely. You can tell by the growth of the plants that they're getting plenty of nutrients and all out of the soil. But light's a very key, key uh, factor in growing a lot of plants, not, not just the cannabis plant, but the, the, it, in just about all of our food crops and agriculture and all, you know, these, these plants have to have a, quite a bit of light so you know the, the clandestine growers that are trying to grow cannabis out in the forest and, and along the edges of the forest and in clearings where they can here and there they you know they they're getting enough light to make the plants grow and probably you know will go on to fruition but it's, the growth rate and the size of the plants and the production and all of that it is very minimal compared to what it would be if they were allowed to get the proper sunlight without fear of you know the DEA helicopters flying over the top of them and finding their crop. That's what, that's what's so stupid that we even spend money to fly people around the country to look to see if anybody's growing cannabis. Of course, now we have the drones. We don't even have to man helicopters anymore. We just send drones out and photograph everybody's yard and let the computer figure out if they've got cannabis growing there. It's just it, it, it's just crazy how the American people are just sitting back and allowing our freedoms to be stripped away could just continually, continually, continually. And then all these measures put in place to make sure that these freedoms stay, stay taken away from us. And this cannabis issue is one of the most anti-constitution events that ever happened. That's why I say that Nixon was the sorriest POS president that we ever have. I'm telling you, he did more to bring about destruction, to bring about people's lives being ruined and and also preventing an herb that has been shown to be so beneficial not only as a medicinal product but as a food source as a source of of industry and textile and we've taken you know this measures that Nixon and the DEA put in place and, and we've caused all this calamity and none of it had to happen 
and it, and it still doesn't have to happen today. It's just, it's amazing that America just sits back and takes this kick in the teeth like we've been taking. I don't get it. And what does it take? Really, what does it take? There's nobody's ever died from it. Nobody's ever gone to the emergency room from it. 65% of Americans, when polled, say that, that cannabis should be legal, that if you have alcohol and cigarettes available out there to, to adults, people of age in that state, there's no reason that the same people shouldn't be able to possess cannabis without fear of going to jail or paying some type of penalty, that they don't pay with alcohol, that they don't pay with cigarettes and prescription drugs by just going and getting a doctor's signature. Allowing Americans to grow their own products, their own cannabis and all, is what this country was founded on. If we didn't have the early farmers developing the seeds and all the varieties and, and, and determining you know, how to handle all these different pests and stuff that they encountered and all, my God, where would we'd all have starved to death a century ago? The cannabis issue is no different. This plant is a very important plant not only as a commodity for people that want to enjoy it and want to smoke it, also as a medicinal product if people that want to use it for medicinal purposes like you do all the other herbs. It's just like the other medicinal herbs. It, it should be free and unhinged from any part of society and nobody should be able to say that one person is wrong for growing it or not growing it or possessing it or not possessing it. That's wrong and, and certainly nobody should be allowed to put anybody in jail over it. But if you are a grower, and, you, and I'm sure that if you're not in Colorado and Washington that you're having to grow clandestine or, or, or in some type of grow chamber and stuff, you all, the most important thing I can tell you to do, and this goes for any type of organic gardening that you grow, no matter what the plants are you're growing, be fastidious. Start with a good soil. Start with good variety of plants, it, depending on what you're growing. Make sure that what you are, if you're growing by seed, make sure that the seed you are planting is the real deal of what you're looking for. If, if not, you better find somebody that has a cloning operation going that can show you what the varieties are of the plants they're selling. So, because a lot of the varieties and stuff that are bought out there today, they're not really what they say they are. So, and, and this is true across the board from every type of herb to vegetable plants to you name it. So you've got to, I suggest to, if you are going to, to uh, take on this adventure and all, do some experimenting first and make sure that the varieties that you're going to grow are the ones you want. And then once you determine that, then keep those plants going as your mother plants and use them as a cutting source to produce any of the other plants that you desire or want to grow. And start out with a good soil and be fastidious. If you do that, you're going to have success. Growing plants is really not a difficult thing. It's a lot of work when you're a farmer because you just have to, you know, grow such tremendous areas and all of that. And it's very tough to keep after, but, but you can do it. And it's just, uh, it's just a matter of being fastidious and, and, and addressing the problem when you first come across it. But I thank you for joining the Canvas Corner and I look to see you real soon. Thank you very much.